Hey guys, so today's video I'm going to build a, well technically convert an electric kiln to a wood-fired rocket kiln. I figured this out, or saw some people doing it on a Facebook group called the Rocket Kiln something on Facebook. I'll link it below. Um, I actually started yesterday, so we missed some of the details, but let me show you what's happening so long. So this is the kiln that I'm going to be using. It's a 6 cubic foot electric front loader. I had to lift it up quite high off the ground, so I lifted it onto four or five bricks. I'm going to need to put concrete or something around just to solidify that mounting, but it's all good for now. Uh, it's just a square on the inside with an arch. Okay, there's all the stuff. It doesn't look too bad, it doesn't look too great either though. Um, what I did yesterday is I cut a hole. Uh, 7 by 7 inches or 18 by 18 centimeters in the bottom on the one side and on the side over there what I'm going to be doing is building a firebox over here that'll go up and then a chimney which comes out the side and obviously up I sourced all these old kiln bricks from another kiln that I took apart that was donated to me so I'll be using a majority of those and a couple of just normal house bricks. Okay, I just want to show you what I'm doing. Basically, I put down this plastic sheet just as a moisture barrier. Um, I put this as an extra layer. Uh, I'm going to then build this. Let's just get the reflection out of the way. Uh, that's kind of what it's going to look like. I'm not going to be using a round metal tube. I'll be using bricks because I have a lot extra. But that's the firebox at the bottom there with the pink and grey bricks. They also used round kilns. I didn't have access to one of those. They're not really common around here. Not unless they're really tiny. So yeah, I could get this one. And that's why I'm building it a little differently to how the guide that they supply uh, <clears throat> is. But yeah, so that's kind of what it's going to look like at the end. I'm going to go to... Basically, they have a really nice guide showing step by step... Uh, that is on the Facebook page. You can go and get it over there if you join the group. That's layer one, layer two, layer three, and so forth. Uh, so yeah, you'll see me do all of that. I've discovered that this is more of a guideline than an actual guide because my kiln is very different. So I couldn't build the J-tube first and then place the kiln. I placed the kiln and now I'm building this and this is now slightly off. But what I've done is I've hung a string down so that I can find out where the corner of this hole is, the inlet. And then I'm going to build according to that. But I've already gone a little wrong. And due to my legs being a little bit in the way, I need to modify it ever so slightly. But I believe it'll all work out in the end. So I'm just going to wing it and then I'll show you guys once I've built up a little bit more. Okay, so I went and I built the whole J-tube. There you can see... That's the firebox, goes, the fire goes in there and then up through that hole and comes out this side. <clears throat> I actually just tested it, I lit a little small fire just to see if it's actually working without the chimney and there you can see the flames are actually being sucked towards the kiln which is pretty awesome. There's a little bit of smoke on this side but on this end, okay now that I opened it there's a little bit but a moment ago there was near no smoke so I just need to control that nicely but I think once the chimney is in it's going to work really well now if I put my hand here it's pretty warm and I really made a very small fire so so far looking real good okay, this is kind of it I built it it does not look beautiful in any way but I think it's going to be functional I ended up using a jack just to lift this up a little bit and move it around when fitting in all those bricks there because it was quite tough <clears throat> I still need to cut this and drill some holes in to make that uh, burner plate inside there but I'll do that a little later I'm just showing you everything for now and that's how it looks underneath there far from beautiful but all good and then I stack these cinder blocks over here just to balance the chimney which I still need to stack a little higher and also stabilize because it's got some movement and a couple of gaps which I'll just fill with clay. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. Like I say, not beautiful, but hopefully very functional. So I'm gonna 
continue packing a little bit of insulation around these house bricks. Here's the burner plate that I started drilling on the one spot, but I had my hammer on my drill on hammer, so it cracked that. But I'm just going to leave it like that, anyways. Turns out the best thing to do is just to have the drill spinning and slowly do it. So that's what I'm going to, those are all the holes I'm going to drill. I just kind of winged it, I didn't mark anything. And then I also decided that after packing all these insulation bricks around the J tube, I'm going to mix up some cob. So here's just some clay, technically leaves and sand. It's not, it's not really a cob mix, but uh, I'm just going to mix that up and cover all the little air gaps that there are. I'm going to wet that up, let it soak for a little while, and then I'll chuck it all over this thing. Change of plan, while wetting the sand and clay mix with the leaves in it, I thought of using pillow stuffing. I had this stuff lying around. It's not straw, but it should do something, so it'll kind of hold everything together just a little bit more. So I added roughly a third. Don't know if that's too much or too little, but I'm pretty sure it's going to help. Anybody say, that says this is easy, I wouldn't say it's that easy. <clears throat> Here's the firebox grate after drilling it. It took really long. It actually took me about 45 minutes to drill all these holes. I've been calling it a burner plate the whole time, but yeah, it's actually a grate. So I'm going to put this in here. Basically just slots in nicely like that. And then I can just put this brick in and stack these others up. That's what it looks like now that I've just put the bricks back in place. I just mudded this up a little bit. I kind of ran out of cob, so I'm just going to leave it till I mix up more for now. And then that's that brick fits in over there. I also started working on the chimney just a little bit. I put a piece of angle iron on the side here. A kiln plate stacked up above this, so I took apart what I did earlier. Um, a piece of angle iron over there as well. I've got this old kiln shelf that I just cut straight over there and I want it to fit in over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chisel out just a small section over on those two bricks so that this can slide in and out as a damper. I'll show you that as soon as I'm done. This piece of wood that I have here is the same thickness as the shelf, maybe slightly thinner but that's okay. So I'm just going to use that as a guide and I'm using this old paint scraper to score in a line on both sides. Maybe I should do that section as well. Just going to go into the brick ever so slightly. It's about five millimeters. I'm not sure how much that is in inches but very little okay that gives me a good idea of the thickness that I need to carve out okay I took the brick out because this is just going to be easier so I'm just going to cut this ever so slightly and then make a line here I'm 
Okay, I wanted to show you that it's possible to do without the angle grinder, but I have it lying right here and it'll just go so much faster. So I'm just going to cut it all away, put my mask on. There we go, that's all I need. I'll double check that's fine and I'll bring another one. Okay. I'll rather cut it a little bit too small and then scrape it out with a kiln shell so that I know it's got a nice good fit. This is the back. There's the line I drew. I'm going to cut this one slightly deeper. Okay, that should be a nice good fit. I'll just put that back. Unfortunately, I've got this tree in the way I can't do much of. Uh, the space I have to work in is quite tight. But I'm just going to slide this back in. I hope you can see this well enough. That should do it. And then this was the brick that I had put there. Let's see how it slides in. Slides in well, doesn't slide out as well. Okay, that was dumb. Don't do that. Okay, fits really nicely. I'm gonna have to fit in another little bridge of some kind here, and then yeah, I'll have to figure out the rest. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I ended up finishing this off off camera because it got a bit dark, and I wanted to finish up really quickly. All I really did was took more angle iron, uh, this piece I clamped, I pulled it really closely, I clamped it with a wood clamp and then I put compression on those bricks over there, both sides, same thing. And now my damper slides in and out really well, so just don't pull it all the way out and then it's fine. Um, and I also went and glazed a bunch of pots to fire them today so they're all stacked up and ready to go uh, I just put them all on the one side I hope what I'm doing is correct but I'll find out if it works or not I also connected the thermocouple so that just goes in there and I have a digital okay it's flashing on screen but it actually says 8 degrees um, this is just a a temperature readout so I'll be able to watch that I'll make a log and show you guys at the end mm -hmm. 